So I've just finished my Trombone Champ Controller version 3.0, complete with 3D printed parts and higher accuracy. So let's see it in action uh, with this rendition of a classic Ode to Joy. All right, so that was not too bad. Um, let's talk about some improvements that I've made in this latest version. Uh, so some viewers correctly commented that the piece of cardboard that I was using as a laser reflector was kind of flimsy. Uh, so this is true, and in some cases it literally flew off the trombone as I was playing, because um, I was just holding it on with like tape. Uh, so sometimes the time of flight sensor would actually stop reading the cardboard and just read past it, and this would cause the mouse cursor to jump around pretty erratically. So I recently bought a 3D printer, and I've been having a lot of fun actually printing out some designs that I've been downloading from the internet. Uh, for example, I printed out uh, like this ice cream cone holder, and I, yeah, I also printed out this Cybertruck that I actually like have never bothered to glue together. Um, but anyway, I haven't actually made anything uh, myself. Like, I haven't created any actual 3D designs, and I thought this would be a good chance to learn how to do that. So I broke out my pair of digital calipers and started measuring the trombone slide um, so I measured the actual width of the slide, I, I measured the distance between the pieces of the slide, um, and I also measured the size of the bell. And just to be clear, I did not use the time of flight sensor because we all know how inaccurate that thing is. So then I used all of those measurements to draw up a plan to add my own laser reflector panel, uh, which has the same shape as the bell, and so when the laser is reflecting off of it, it'll be sure to hit it and then give me more accurate readings. So I used this website called Tinkercad to lay out my design, and it was pretty easy to work with. I did find that it was kind of hard to measure distances between points easily. After printing out the first version, I found that it didn't quite fit because the arms weren't spaced out quite correctly. Um, they were just spaced out a little bit too far, and I think there was just some discrepancy between the uh, width of the actual parts, and I forgot to like include the actual width of the arms themselves in the measurements. So I actually printed out the second version, and this is the second version of it. Um, and you can see, like, it'll attach to the bell, or it'll attach to the slide, and it fits pretty well without having to add any tape or anything onto it. And so then, um, it's a good point to reflect off of uh, for the time of flight sensor. And it doesn't really fall off unless I move the slide really fast like that. Um, but I'm not usually moving the slide really fast when I'm actually playing a game, so it's not a big deal. So I also took the first failed reflector that I printed out, and I cut off the arms. And then I actually just attach it to the front of the bell so that there's a pretty sturdy spot to attach the time of flight sensor. Uh, and it's flush with the surface of the bell. And this is important so that the sensor and the reflector are lined up. Um, and this also kind of helps the air leakage issue. Um, it kind of helps the air from puffing up the saran wrap and then um, losing more air because of that. So it's like the first part of the seal of the trombone. 
Uh, so a bunch of people were also commenting that I should use some sort of data smoothing algorithm uh, for the time of flight sensor instead of just getting the raw data from uh, the sensor itself. And I was kind of hesitant to do this mostly because I didn't want to write any C++ code. Um, but I finally relented because so many people actually sent me comments that were like, okay, it's easy, just use some algorithms. So I ended up using a really simple moving average uh, where I can configure the number of uh, readings to actually include in the average. And I found that through testing, um, using three or two readings is probably the sweet spot. Um, anything higher than that and you introduce a lot of lag into the readings. And so um, I, I have an example where I use three uh, and then I have an example where I use 10 readings. And you can see like the 10 reading uh, setting is just way too high. Um, it introduces a lot of lag and I wouldn't really be able to play the game very well. Uh, so I think this did end up helping a little bit, but it's definitely not a silver bullet. Um, and I think the, the higher quality sensor uh, did a lot to improve the accuracy um, versus the first sensor that I had, which was kind of faulty. So one great thing that I actually discovered while filming this uh, latest video is that the developers of Trombone Champ added some additional accessibility features uh, for people, especially for people using custom controllers. Uh, and so I turned on this mode that uses the mouse movement instead of position, uh, which helps a lot with drift. Um, and there's even a calibration at the beginning of every song so that the first position of the horn always stops at the very top of the screen. So many thanks to Holy Wow for implementing these. Yay! So after playing uh, with the new 3.0 version of the controller, I was actually very happy with the results. Um, until I actually put the horn down and started taking it apart. Um, so I noticed that after a particularly long play session, when I removed the section that has the time of flight sensor, I actually saw that there was a lot of condensation on the horn. Um, and I think what ended up happening was that uh, sealing up the horn with the saran wrap actually prevents uh, a lot of moisture from leaving the horn. And so that condensation builds up and then it ends up actually uh, pulling around the front of the horn where the saran wrap is. Okay, so here's a fun brass instrument lesson actually. Uh, so brass instruments have this thing called the spit valve. And basically what it's there for is as you're breathing air um, through the horn, your breath naturally has some water vapor in it. And so your warm breath going through a cold horn will cause the water in your breath to condensate on the edges of the inside of the horn. Um, and so what happens here is um, water will build up in the horn and not spit. And um, if you've ever listened to like Miles Davis, sometimes he'll be playing a note and it's just like really kind of watery. <laughs> Uh, because he's not emptying his spit valve. I'm not sure if he did that on purpose or not, um, but he really should have, you know, emptied it. Um, anyway, uh, actually, let's see if there's uh, any spit in here right now, or <laughs> water. Uh... Okay, so there's a little bit, yeah, uh, and I just got it on my carpet. Um, but that's okay, because, you know, it's not spit, it's water, um, I think. Um, I didn't spit into my horn, but you know, there's like there's like a 0.1% chance that there's some spit in there. Okay, so anyway, regardless of whether or not it's water or spit, um, I think having this giant saran wrap on my uh, bell of my horn is not very good for it, um, just because there's a lot of electronic equipment in here, like the air pressure sensor, um, and so I'll probably have to find a way to solve that problem somehow. So now that I'm basically an expert in 3D design and printing 3D parts, um, I thought it might be a good idea to try and either create um, a 3D printed mouthpiece that I can use to um, attach the air pressure sensor to directly, um, and then I can just completely bypass blowing air through the rest of the horn, um, or create some sort of adapter where I can um, you know, have it divert air out to the air pressure sensor. Um, while using a real mouthpiece, because I think, I mean, this is like a really cool mouthpiece, so it's gold, so I'd, I'd like to keep using it. Um, but I think that will be probably the next version of my trombone controller. So as always, um, if you want to see the next video in my Trombone Champ controller saga, uh, you can go ahead and subscribe to my channel, um, and you can like this video if you liked it. If you got this far, then you probably do like it, so go ahead and truly like it. And I've really been blown away by just all of the interest in this project. Um, it's like a really stupid project, but I don't know why people are so interested in it. Um, you know, but as long as people are interested in it, I can just keep on improving on this thing. And maybe eventually I'll even be able to get like a B on a song. Um, so stay tuned for that. 
Um, yeah, and as always, uh, you know, I look forward to seeing you in the next video, and happy tromboning.